What's up guys, this is Ashlax. Today I have the showcase for Iligos. Is this a hero that can do a lot of damage? Can he help the team? Let's see how he performs. I have him on a uh, pretty fast build with high offensive stats. It's going to be right after this. This video was brought to you by Amazon App Store and Amazon Coins. Where are we going? We're going on vacation. What do you mean? I didn't even pack my bag. Don't worry, I packed all your bags. Wow, but how much it costs to bring all this? It's not a big deal. I've been saving money with the Amazon App Store. Oh, really? Let's go then. Wow, look at that view. It's amazing. If you're going to spend for Illigos, you should do so by using Amazon Coins. What's up, guys? This is Ashnox. If you want to save as much money as possible with the best possible discounts when you're doing in-app purchases in Epic 7, you should definitely be using the Amazon App Store. And don't forget, use my link in the description of the video or use my QR code, which is right here. Thanks a lot for your support. It's really easy to start saving. There's just three steps. One, get your Amazon coins. Two, get Epic 7 from Amazon App Store on your favorite device, Android phone, tablet, or even on your Windows 11 PC. Third, once you've done that, just log into Epic 7 through the Amazon App Store. Thanks a lot to Amazon for sponsoring this video. All right, here we go. So I have him on speed penetration, as you can see, 246 speed, almost 100% crit chance. You don't need the crit chance that high. 85% is going to be fine because he gets 15% from perception buff. Crit damage, pretty high up there. Effectiveness, 45%. To be honest, there's some ways to use him where you don't actually need the effectiveness because you might have souls or you might be using skill 1 instead of skill 3 because... It's actually a pretty cool combo that you can pull off. Triggering skill 2 into the skill number 1 is something I'm having quite a bit of success with. And I'm thinking that you guys will be enjoying that as well. And you might be able to see the strength of using that combination versus certain opponents. And I'll be talking about pros and cons to using Eligos. And uh, like I talked about during the uh, summon video, right? Using uh, Sash Aitane is going to be a powerful artifact for you. Using his own artifact, I feel like it's not good enough because, first of all, you need to have multiple copies. Then uh, you don't get the team-wide combat just push, which uh, Sash Aitane provides you. Uh, Sash Aitane is a four-star artifact. You can easily max out. You're going to be getting the, you know, max flat attack and health. You're going to be getting a nice amount of CR pushing for your whole team, which is definitely going to be able to make you win games. Now... I'm using him on account number one. I have a lot of speed. I have high single target damage dealers, high AoE damage dealers for cleaving. And uh, you can notice him triggering the skill number two and being able to deal quite a bit of damage. Now, using the skill number three is good if you have some tanky heroes that you need to take care of, especially if you have 20 souls and you need to go against a high effect resistance target. You want to apply defense break, you want to apply target debuff so you can do maximum damage versus that target. And uh, also, you got the evasion uh, reduction from the target debuff, so that's pretty nice. But man, Ailey goes, uh, I'm very surprised by his performance when I trigger S2, and then I start doing a bunch of S1s, and I'm calling, what is really cool about the skill number one is that it calls the hero on your team with the highest attack. This is a guarantee, and you can know what type of damage that you can expect. It's calling your highest attack here, so you could be bringing him in a team versus like a tanky high attack bruiser, right? And he could be calling that hero with that S number one. And uh, you might be just taking out one of their squishy hero with one of your high speed, uh, you know, attacker. Let's say you have an assassin Sid and you're opening against uh, their team that has, you know, a squishy hero on high speed. Maybe they have bruisers as well, but you could be able to use uh, Illigos like that and make him... Uh, do some work for you and then you're gonna have the choice of using skill three or skill number one and uh i feel like it, it's working real well for me now in other play styles like the, like i talked about you could have a team that is uh more balanced not fully high speed squishy heroes not much health not much survivability and then you just go down real easy if you cannot take them in a short amount of time in a few turns but you could uh, throw like let's say an apocalypse ravi in there right and uh, you could be throwing in there maybe a knight with Aureus or a soul weaver that can heal a rule of light, Apocalypse Ravi, plus like uh, himself and a high speed hero. Uh, it really depends who you are fighting, right? But uh, I'm liking his performance. 
Now, he needs to have perception for the skill 1 to call uh, someone into a dual attack, right? So, you definitely need to down someone. That is the big trade-off. That, that's a big problem with using this hero. If you cannot take out anyone, then the S2 doesn't trigger. This whole hero's kit fall apart. Because then, you know, you open skill number 3. That is if the enemy doesn't open against you first, right? So, there's the speed battle there going on. 124 base speed yes you could have your some of your best speed gear on him you might be able to open against uh, an opponent right a slower opponent uh, even on this in a speed battle he could be uh opening up first especially if you have a speed imprint or more something like that right uh but i like the, the i like the flexibility of having the 20 soul soul burn to ignore effect resistance that can definitely come in handy i like the flexibility of using skill 1 instead of skill number 3, depending on uh, what type of team composition you're doing. If you're super high offense, very aggressive playstyle, then you're going to be able to just pop someone, get that S2 guarantee. Really like that. Uh, it's just happening, right? But if you can't take out anyone and you're just dropping them uh, to a lower amount of health, like under 50% HP, like where ML Charles, uh, Charles could kick in and start to do his combo, uh, then if you can't manage that, then this hero is just not going to help you much. Now, of course, you could have Sasha Itane. That's, that's helpful. You have the, uh, you know, uh, attack increase imprint for uh, back and top position. So that's something he provides, right? But you definitely need to that, get that S2 going. Now, the skill 2 only has a two-turn cooldown. So there's some battles where I'm able to actually get it going uh, more than once. So I really like that. Perception goes. Uh, you get a buff, and then you can trigger uh, dual attacks with skill 1. Very, very dangerous stuff, right? But uh, skill 3, and then waiting uh, for another turn, right? No S2 triggering, or you... Skill 3, and then waiting, that's an issue. Uh, I like to just trigger S2, and then decide skill 1 or skill number 3. So uh, definitely not a hero for everyone. And uh, you can't pick him too early on as well. That could be problematic, especially if you're facing uh, Ice Hero or more than one. Um, but I like that he gets the attack buff. The attack buff really solidifies the amount of damage that he can do. You don't need crazy amount of attack uh, and crit damage. You can still do pretty good for yourself, especially if you have him on a penetration set, right? Like single target damage is what he does. So you definitely want to have him on a penetration set. You could have him on a hit set, but then you could soul burn to ignore effect resistance. And you might not need the highest of effectiveness when you use this hero, because you might be using skill throwing a hero that doesn't have much effect resistance. So you do have to keep that in mind. And as you can see, I'm fighting my own accounts. You know, I'm using two phones fighting my own accounts that have actual good gear on uh, in an RTA uh, scenario. And I'm trying various things. You know, it seemed with Orius, Adam, and Shield, it, it seemed that has those two things, plus a Weaver like Ruel, uh, tankier he, uh, teams, Bruiser team, right, with some sustain, speed teams as well. And uh, I'm putting him to the test. And uh, I like what I'm seeing. But this is with this account with this type of gear with these heroes that have a lot of speed right so like i said it's gonna be very important for you to pick the right heroes because if you can't make that uh, that kill happen early on no s2 no perception no s1 uh, calling uh, the highest attacker on your team into a dual attack it's gonna be rough if you just open with his skill number three, especially if you don't soul burn because there's a Bellion and you, you don't have the luxury of free banning Bellion, you can't free ban, you can't ban phase her, you're not picking her, then she's let through and then let's say you uh, you have one mage or two mage, they have the Gale's Ancient book, you don't have your souls and you're fighting a team that's very tanky with high effect resistance on key heroes that need to go down. Uh, cleanser, revivers, healers, uh, heroes that could be really problematic for you if you're trying to cleave their team and you can't make it happen. Uh, or at least you're taking some of them out, but then you can't disable that high effect resistance hero that's about to revive their whole team. Like, you know, it could be a Destina. That could be really, really bad. Like, extremely bad. 
So I feel like this hero is definitely not for everyone. Very high gear level required. Even if you're going to be soul burning skill 3, yes, you could be bringing him in a control environment and you just, you know, soul burn skill number 3. Uh, things will be happening the way you want them to happen. That's easy. That, that's easy. But in World Arena, it's going to be a different ball game, of course. But you do need, like, the mage, the 20 souls. If you want to soul burn his S3, that's two heroes in a Guild War format. Uh, you just have one uh, other spot that's flexible, right? Um, but I, I definitely like that he has 124 base speed. I like uh, the, the short cooldown on the skill number two. Uh, like I said, using skill one or skill three, depending on the situation. That, that's pretty sweet right there. You could be using the skill once a few times, like two times per, with perception. And then you could switch to soul burning skill number three uh, versus a pretty tanky hero. That's nice. Also, you can strip two buff before you can actually uh, land a defense break and target debuff. So that is definitely going to be uh, quite helpful in a lot of situations. In terms of damage, it's pretty decent. I like that his damage increases based on how much speed he has. I like the damage multiplier boosting the damage of skill 2, uh, which is based on the difference of his speed versus the opponent's speed. So the more speed you have over your opponent, the more damage you can expect out of the skill number 2. So that's real sweet. Now, in terms of artifact, I feel like Sash Titan is like so strong in uh, my type of team compositions because a teamoid CR push really uh, makes it so my heroes go back to back and that is a lot of pressure against the enemy and i'm able to over like lap them get more turns against them and clean them up whoever is left and that felicitate uh, facilitates the whole thing and that is uh quite enjoy enjoyable to do uh, you don't need to have imprints on him you don't need to have his own artifact uh the thing about his artifact that i don't like the biggest thing is that the CR push, the combat shooting push is going to happen on the ally on your team with the highest combat shooting. Now that hero might be close to 100%, that hero might be already at 100%, so you are wasting value there. Uh, if it doesn't work like that, you guys let us know in the comment section, but it says that it's going to boost the combat shooting of the ally with the highest CR that is not himself. That's one ally, and that ain't cool. That ain't cool. Also, thing is, Sash Itane, when you wear it on a Ranger, any hero on your team that defeats someone will activate it on himself, like any Ranger that wears it. So that's a team-wide thing. It's a team-wide CR push. It's very, very powerful. Only 4-star, easy to max out. So you just get so much value out of that. And I feel like if you don't feel like uh, he's doing well, you know, you're bringing him in your team compositions and you feel like he's underperforming, really give it a shot with Sash Itane. Even if you lucked out and you have his artifact maxed out, he's not the hero that is about to destroy their whole team. He helps. He's supporting damage. If you're able to pop someone because of the S2, good for you, but that's not going to happen all the time. Yes, you could pop a Selene, you could pop a green soft target, but if they bring, if they bring a Senya in there, like you've seen, Senya will take the damage. She might not be, be critted. She might just straight up tank the damage, right? So you can't rely on him popping someone, right? So he's there for support. And he's doing a pretty damn good job at it, I feel like, in my team composition. So, uh, you know, it, it will depend how uh, how you what team you bring him in, what type of stats line you have on your heroes and all that. But uh, things really fall together real well uh, with him and the team. Now, if I had, let's say, Imprints, right? That that would be pretty nice. Like, extra damage for my team. I would take that. That's great. Now, the S2, if you can consistently make that happen, right? Every two turns, Perception will be on him. Which means you can continuously haul a, a hero with dual attack with skill 1. And he has high, high speed. You build him high speed, which means... He's gonna cycle fast. He's gonna call it. He's gonna call dual attack with uh, your hero with the highest attack. Often it could be a C dom like myself, which is just super juiced up, big damage out of her, especially if she has attack buff, charged up, charged up attack because uh, your team is critting. Uh, hopefully multiple targets, boosting her damage multiplier even higher. Very nice. Uh, I think uh, I really like his performance. Uh, I'm gonna have to try him out in other format. But you guys let us know what you guys think. 
about him in the comment section. Uh, how did you use him? Did it work well? If it did work well, what type of like stats you have on him? Uh, you know, gear and what type of sim composition you are using him in. No control environment is going to be easy. Like I said, World Arena is a different ball game, right? Uh, but still, you can get uh, success with this hero if you uh, employ a similar strategy to me. So yeah, that's it for this one. Martial arts, good luck with all your dopey stuff for now.